Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jinu. I am an editorial assistant at One Story, and I have been tasked tonight with guiding you through uh, a bit of a tradition we have here at the magazine. At every One Story benefit, we like to hand out a signature cocktail to everybody who walks in. This year, we are not able to do that, of course. So we are offering the next best thing, which is to watch me on your computer uh, make our signature drink and pretend that I am giving it to you. This time, uh, we've chosen the old fashioned tonight. So I will walk you through how to make one and we'll share a drink together in celebration of one story and everybody that supports it. You will need a glass, some water, an orange peel, some sugar, ice, uh, your favorite bitters, you can find this at any liquor store, and your favorite whiskey. This is perfect. If you're feeling up to it, you can also use this one. So, first thing to do is to spoon one sugar cube's worth of sugar into the glass. Once you're done with that, hit this with two drops, two splashes of bitters. Drown with a little bit of water and stir together to let the sugar and the bitters get to know each other. After that, you want to toss in the whiskey. and some ice. The most important thing about the ice is that it's going to chill the drink. It's also gonna introduce some dilution. You're supposed to use, you know, big, clear, fancy ice cubes, but I don't have that. So we're gonna make the best of what we have. Stir this together. Let the sugar dissolve, let the bitters and the whiskey come together. Last thing you want to do is take your orange peel, squeeze it a little bit just to introduce the oils on top of the drink, turn it into a fancy little twist, and drop it inside. This is for everybody who has supported One Story over the years, and this especially difficult year. Uh, thank you all. Cheers. I'm going to turn it over now to um, our editor-in-chief, Patrick. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Patrick Ryan. I'm the editor of One Story, and I'm going to try to give you the history of our magazine in 120 seconds. So here goes. One Story began back in 2002, when Mary Beth Batcha and Hannah Tinty saw traditional venues for short stories vanishing, as magazines either scaled back on their fiction or stopped publishing fiction altogether or folded. The short story, they decided, deserves better. So Hannah and Mary Beth came up with the idea of starting a new magazine that would be print only, subscription only, would never publish an author more than once, and would publish just one story at a time. Or what to call it. As they began to publish a new story every three or four weeks, they wondered if readers and writers would notice. Well, readers noticed, writers noticed, agents noticed, and the editors of the prize anthologies noticed. Stories that get published in one story consistently are chosen for reprint in anthologies like the Best American Short Stories, Best American Mystery Stories, the O. Henry Prize Stories, and the Pushcart Prize Anthology. Having started out as a tiny operation in two living rooms in Brooklyn, one story now has nearly 10,000 readers and we published the work of over 280 different writers. Along the way, we became a 501 3C nonprofit organization. We have an education program that includes online and in-person classes. We have a summer writers conference that brings together 20 to 30 writers from around the world. And we have a sister publication called One Teen Story that holds an annual teen writing contest and publishes the work of three young writers ages 13 to 19. Everything that we do, we do with a small staff and an army of volunteers and supporters. We couldn't do it without you. 
So we thank you for your support. And I'm now very happy to turn things over to the two people who started it all, Brooklyn's own dynamic duo, Mary Beth Batcha and Hannah Tinton. Welcome everyone to our online fundraising event. I can't believe we're finally here. Uh, <laughs> thanks Patrick for that great introduction and thank you Gino for the drink. I've got my old fashioned right here, which I will be sipping throughout our online fabulousness. Um, we've got a lot in store for you tonight, including a parade of literary debutantes, nine one-story authors who published their debut books in the past year that we're celebrating tonight. We also have an exquisite corpse written by four writers slash editors who've appeared in our pages. But first, I want to give a shout out and introduce the other half of our dy dynamic duo, Mary Beth Bacha. Thank you so much, Hannah, um, and thank you all for coming to this first ever online fundraiser. For the next 40 minutes or so, we are going fully into pledge drive mode. Um, if you're here, know that you can see us, but we actually can't see you. So let us know that you stopped by by making a donation tonight if you haven't already, and a bunch of you have. Um, big, small, or teeny tiny, we'll see them as they come in, and we'll be grateful, and we won't feel so alone in our little internet boxes. <laughs> so the purpose of this awkward, just a tiny bit better than Zoom event is to do two things. One, to make the case of why you should support one story. And two, to show everyone who already supports one story what a good choice they made. And we're going to start by thanking those folks, particularly those folks who said yes. When we said, will you sponsor this online event, which is going to have a crazy exquisite corpse. Um, a lot of them are in book publishing, an industry that people are always saying is, you know, is book publishing dead? And I want to say that publishing is tenacious and it's generous and it's wonderful because people always love to read. Um, so these folks have been sponsoring one story for years and I'm going to thank them by name just to kick it off. Um, the MFA in writing at Manhattanville College, Penguin Press, Araji Inc., The Book Group, Catapult, Sarah Burns and the Gernert Company, Simon & Schuster Book for Young Readers, PJ Mark and Janklo and & Nesbitt Associates, Maria Massey and MMQ Lit, Jane and Bert Emke, Rach Family, Kevin Raymond, Lex and Helen Harris, and Danny Shapiro and Michael Marin. Without the help from sponsors like these and from supporters like you, because if you're here, you're probably a supporter, one story wouldn't be here. Unlike many publications, we have no single large funder or institution behind us. We rely on, on, on the collective to keep us going. That's why for this fundraiser, we decided to try to entertain you with some collective storytelling. Hannah? Care to explain some more? <laughs> I would gladly do so. So <laughs> we are doing an exquisite corpse tonight. An exquisite corpse is a parlor game that involves multiple people contributing to a drawing or story without being able to read or see the entire piece. So it's a bit like a game of telephone. A writer will complete a sentence, share it with a second writer who adds their own sentence, who then shares it with a third writer who can see the second writer's sentence, but not the first writer's sentence. And at the end, you unfold the paper and you enjoy this delightfully strange collective work. And this game was invented in the early 20th century by the Surrealists. The name Exquisite Corpse came from the first time they played the game, which resulted in this sentence, the Exquisite Corpse shall drink the new wine. So it's about finding connections, even though you're apart, which seem very appropriate for this separate but together event we are having tonight. And now it is time to introduce the contenders. First up is Manuel Gonzalez, representing Williamstown, Massachusetts. Manuel is the author of One Story Issue Number 66, Pilot Co-Pilot Writer, and The Miniature Wife, and The Regional Office is Under Attack. He is a contributing editor at One Story. Next, we've got Don Lee representing Baltimore, Maryland. Don is the author of One Story Issue Number 275, Reenactments, and the author of Country of Origin, Rack and Ruin, The Collective, and Lonesome Lies Before Us. You may also know him as the editor for many years of the fabulous literary magazine, Plowshares. Next, we've got Rachel Lyon representing Ashfield, Massachusetts. Rachel is the author of One Story Issue number 262, You'll Know When It's Time. She's also the author of the novel Self-Portrait with Boy. She's also the editor-in-chief of Epiphany Magazine. And finally, we've got Patrick Ryan representing New York, New York. 
Patrick is the author of One Story Issue number 53, So Much for Artemis, as well as the books Send Me and The Dream Life of Astronauts. Patrick is the editor-in-chief of One Story. Before the, before the event, we asked our sponsors to donate words for our exquisite corpse tonight. The writers will have to use these words in the story that they're writing, and some of them are really hard words. <laughs> One of them I don't even know how to pronounce. It's exolutherostomize. I had to look up the definition and it means to speak out freely in an inappropriate moment. I would not want to be the writer who gets that word, but it will be fun to see what they do with the challenge. And luckily, all these writers are also editors. Um, some of the other words that these editors and writers are going to be given that you should look out for are crackers, perspicacious, ebullient, and woo-woo. Thank you to Helen Ellis for that one. <laughs> we also have <laughs> peripatetic, abrupt, and draining, which I hope tonight's game will not be. We're going to be checking in with each of our exquisite corpse writers during the show to see how the story is coming along. And we're going to start with one story author and contributing editor, Manuel Gonzalez. Manuel, the first word you must use is penguin. Penguin. All right, great, penguin. I can work with penguins. Uh, while I write, let's take a look at the impact one story has had over the past year. I'm Josh Friedel, the author of One Story Issue number 261, Midnight Sessions. What I'll remember most about being published in one story is the extraordinary care and attention to detail the editors took in helping to make this story the best possible version of itself. Hi everyone, I'm Arvin Ramagolam, and I'm the winner of the 2020 Adina Talb Goodman Fellowship. And I'm here today at my bookstore, Townie Books in Crested Butte, Colorado. And I wanted to share a little bit with you about what it's been like since I won the fellowship. Winning the fellowship um, really helped me grow as a writer, not just with what I put on the page, but how I think of myself and my work. It's been a huge experience to really take a leap um, with my writing, improving it, editing myself, and then thinking about the bigger picture of how my work works together with other stories that I'm creating and how it fits into the world itself here, um, perhaps one day on the shelf. I am Rachel Lyon, the author of One Story Issues 262. You'll know when it's time. And the best part of publishing in One Story was working with uh, the editor, Patrick Ryan. Shannon Sanders, the author of One Story Issue 263, The Everest Society. Um, the best part of being published in One Story was how it helped me to grow my network of readers and fellow fiction lovers. Um, it's always so exciting to hear from someone who enjoyed the story and maybe found their way to some of my other work. And now I'm thrilled to have more people to talk about stories with. So thank you to One Story for such a great opportunity. Hi, I'm Molly Gutman, the author the author of Extraordinary Miraculous, which is issue 264, I think. Yeah, 264. Um, the, the thing that I'm going to remember the most from working with one story is the care that they took in fostering the story through the publication process. Um, taking that story as seriously as they did to ensure that it was its best version meant in some way that they were taking me very seriously as a writer. 
And that was such a well-timed boost of confidence. Um, and I'm really, really grateful for the experience. My name is Addison Straw, author of One Team Story, issue number 62, Like a Rainbow. What I really loved about being published in the One Team Story magazine was it gave me unique opportunities to undergo certain processes that I normally would not go through as an amateur writer. I'm super happy to be able to have been given this opportunity to get my work published because now I am an official published author and I'm so happy because that has been my lifelong dream for a while. So to finally get that as a teenager is super fun. I'm Mary Grimm, the author of Fate and Ruin, which is in One Story, issue 635. The best part of being published in One Story was being published by a writer who I immensely respect and who was a former student of mine. Thanks, Will Allison. Hi, I'm Ian Bassenthwaite, the author of One Story, Issue 266, The Crucible. The best part of being published in One Story, besides first opening the box and holding my issue, was putting several copies in a little free library in my yard. The next morning, every copy was gone. It was nerve wracking to think people I knew were actually reading my work, but also really powerful to see someone walk by my house holding my tiny orange story. Hey, this is Mike Cardos, author of issue 267, The Wish. The um, best thing about being published in one story, people read it. I mean, they really read it. I got emails and texts and evidence that the story was in the world and people read it and thought about it. And that was an amazing, amazing thing. And also the font, because come on, there are certain fonts that every writer really desperately wants their work to appear in. And the one story font, that's a biggie. Hi there, I'm Jinzo Duque, the author of One Story Issue number 268, The Rest of Us. Uh, what I'll remember most about being published in One Story is working closely with Patrick Ryan and the One Story family. Uh, editing The Rest of Us uh, together was truly something special, and One Story's support only further empowered me and my voice. I'm lucky to have experienced that level of care, and I know any author who gets to share that experience in the future will feel so too. I'm Erica Yip, the author of One Teen Story, issue 63, 50 Square Feet Within. The best part of being published in One Teen Story was being able to share the voices of a marginalized group in Hong Kong and being able to discover the intersection between storytelling and social justice. Hi, I'm Kota Kaunamui, the author of One Story, issue number 269, Small Wonders. What I always remember about being published in one story is being pushed to make my story as tight as neat and as clean as possible, which is the complete opposite of how I usually work. Usually my stories are big and sprawling and have a lot of secondary characters. And so this was a new way of approaching my work, which I will recently take forward um, into my career. Um, I also remember just the great sense of collaboration between myself and the editors, Karen Friedman and Patrick Ryan, um, and the great care and respect that they had for my work. Uh, so it was a great experience being published by One Story, and I always appreciate that. Thank you. Hello, 
My name is Johanka Delgado, and I wrote issue 270 of One Story, The Rat. I was a subscriber long before I was a contributor, and I would look forward to unwrapping, you know, this gem of a story every month from the magazine. So my absolute favorite part of the publishing process with One Story was unboxing my own set of contributor copies. It was just oh, such a wonderful feeling, and it was the closest I think I'll ever feel to being Scrooge McDuck diving into a vault full of gold coins. Hi, I'm Jinu. Um, I'm an editorial assistant at One Story, and I have a lot of favorite things about the magazine, but one of them is the font that gets highlighted every issue. It's always different, it's always fun, and uh, proves every time to be such a great introduction and encapsulator of the story that we're highlighting. I'm Jen Alandi Trahan, the author of One Story Issue number 271, The Free Coins Up Again. And the best part of being published in One Story was working with Patrick Ryan, who's an awesome coach and teammate. I'm Don Teal W. Moniz, author of One Story Issue 272, Necessary Bodies. And the best thing about being published in one story is being published in one story. It has always been a bucket list publication for me. So being able to join the ranks of authors who get to be showcased there is phenomenal. Uh, hello, my name is Gabriel Kralik. I'm the author of One Teen Story, issue 65, The Squatchers. Uh, the best part of being published in One Teen Story is that it gave me the confidence to take my writing more seriously. I'm Stephen Fishback, author of One Story, issue number 273, To Sharks. The best part about being published in One Story was that it was my debut publication. Debuting in my dream magazine gave me confidence that maybe all this time I was spending making horrible things happen to imaginary people was not just a sign of developing insanity. It showed me that writing could be a path for me. And equally importantly, it showed that same thing to my parents. My favorite thing about One Story is the talent, not just on the page, but all of the talent that's behind the scenes, reading the stories, talking about them, editing, and then bringing the journal together. Hi, I'm Diana Vega, winner of the 2021 Adina Tall Goodman Fellowship. And when I found out I won the fellowship, I screamed scream of gratitude, a scream of just like, finally, things are working out for me. Uh, and just a scream of thank you. Uh, I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Thank you. Hi everyone, welcome back. You know, it is so nice for us and I hope you, it's so nice for you to see our fellows and writers like that in person. One story has always been about letting the writers speak for themselves and the, their writing speak for themselves in the pages, but seeing their faces and hearing their voices really made the connection between me as a reader and their work as a writer that much stronger. Um, I wanna thank them for their kind words, but I also wanna thank every single writer who kept writing this year and everyone who sent work to us um, I know it was hard to focus this year and we, our submissions, you guys just kept writing and thank you. Even in this really hard year, you were doing it. Yeah, and although this year was a real challenge, it also made us understand how much our community means to us, 
and how much one story matters to that community. And our community got a lot bigger when we were under lockdown. We decided, you know, we were like, we're all trapped in our homes. Let's, you know, we were all freaking out about we no one knew what was going on. And we decided to host uh, one of our classes right with one story as a pay what you want. So you pay just a dollar and, you know, and join us for uh, every day. You got a new writing exercise led by another member of one story. And we had writers logging in from all over the world. We had over 500 people taking part. We had people in Australia and Japan and Korea and South America and all across Europe and all across America. And Mary Beth was our fearless leader. Uh, she led the class. Mary Beth, what was that like? You know, every day I'd get up and I'd do the writing exercise and I'd read other people's work and I'd feel a little bit human and a little bit less afraid of what was going on in the world. It really brought home one of our core beliefs, which is that writing fiction has an intrinsic value for anyone who tries their hand at it. This year, over 2,000 people tried their hand at writing with us in online classes with us. 2,000, it's a lot. Um, and we're gonna go back into the pledge drive mode. If you were one of those writers and you felt a little more connected to the world, um, taking a class with us, or if you just want there to continue to be affordable one-story writing classes for writers at all level, I hope you'll consider support supporting us tonight and join some of the people who already gave at the beginning of our show. There's Jonathan Fiedler and Craig Donig, and thank you. And four of our writers who were in that video, Rachel Lyon, um, Jen Alandi Trahan, Dantiel W. Moniz, and Stephen Fishback. Thank you, guys. Um, also, for the first time ever, you can give via text. It's on the screen, but you can text one story to 44321. And if you give $75 or more, you will get three issues from the Wayback Machine, also known as the first five years of one story. <laughs> yeah. And those first five years, they were hard years. I mean, Mary Beth and I were just literally putting the whole thing together um, ourselves. We were stuffing envelopes late at night in our apartments. Um, and <laughs> we also published some incredible writers early in their careers. So, and they went on to great fame. So some of the people we published in those first five years, who you might get, are writers like John Hodgman and Kelly Link and Joanna Hershon and Darren Strauss and Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie and Kevin Wilson and Paul Yoon and Anna Solomon and Celeste Ng and also Manuel Gonzalez, who is creating a new story right now while we are talking. I'm so curious what sentences our four writers are concocting. So let's check in on our exquisite corpse. Let's go to Rachel Lyon and Patrick Ryan. It's time to give you some donated words. Rachel, your word is crackers. All right. Patrick, your word is peripatetic. Why can't I have crackers? <laughs> <laughs> crackers is what you eat if your stomach is feeling kind of peripatetic. <laughs> Wow. All right. Now I need to look up crackers as well. Okay. Uh, while we write, let's watch our literary debutantes take a bow. Oh, it's so beautiful. 
<laughs> I actually was really emotional. You know, normally our debutantes are walking down the aisle at our debutante ball, but it was actually really emotional to get each of these videos from them walking wherever they're living right now as they were making their way through the pandemic. Uh, and in the week leading up to our fundraiser tonight, we shared a video of each of these nine literary debutantes reading the first lines from their incredible first books. So it's always an uphill battle sending a book out into the world, but it was especially difficult during 2020 and even harder for a debut author. And these nine one-story authors had to reinvent this publishing wheel, shift all their promotions to virtual, and they just did an amazing job. And I hope that everyone who is logging in tonight, who is listening to us, will buy these debut books and also all their future books too. Um, you know, 2020 threw itself is up too. And I'm a little emotional because of the video and you guys are being so so generous online. So thank you. Um, but last year at this time, we knew that we couldn't hold our debutante ball and our summer writing workshop had been canceled. Um, and we were worried about how we would make it. Uh, but we received a PPP grant and we were awarded CARES funding from the NEA. And we were announced as one of the Whiting Foundation Magazine's prize winners. And this prize is really an honor. It goes to just three literary magazines a year, and it offers three years of funding opportunities and a lot of professional development. Our Whiting grant for 2021 is a matching grant. Um, so when you give tonight, you help us make our match and your gift will be doubled. I just checked our donation. I'm gonna have a shout out to Peter and Karen Seligman and Mark Neeson and Eugene de Saunier, who also donated tonight. Thank you so much. Um, and if like some of these folks, you decide to give $250 or more tonight, um, a gift that will be worth five confetti, five to us, and we have a special <laughs> gift for you. We have a few of these amazing debutante books in our office, um, and if you give um, $250 or more tonight, we will send a copy with a book plate signed by one of these debut authors. So I keep thinking about our four one-story authors who are still madly typing away. Let's see what's happening in the writer's room. All right, it's time to check in with our last exquisite corpse writer, Don Lee. Don, hi. Your hi. word for your next sentence is woo-woo. Ah, woo-woo. I like that, you know? It's a little different from the other words. And so, and I think it could actually be, it can it be both uh, an exclamation and a noun, maybe? Mm -hmm. Some possibilities. So how is it going for you? Is it a challenge to do this? Uh, no, actually it's been fun, but I have to tell you, like I, I had some, uh, you know, anxiety going into this because I thought, oh my God, you know, like how if I freeze and I can't think of anything to write and have writer's block in the moment. And then all of a sudden that whole sort of imposter syndrome is going to come up and people are going to think, this guy is actually a fraud and he's not a writer at all. He's never written his own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so I had that all coming up into it, but it's been fun. And, uh, and I've been okay. I've been able to come up with some sentences. So it's been a lot of fun. I can't wait to see what Don does with woo woo. <laughs> such a great word but you know it's 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 great to listen to don say that because this is something i talk to my students about all the time and actually all the one story writers you know we all feel like imposters even someone like don lee who has published so many books and done so many great things in the literary world so writers you only have a few minutes left so finish up those last sentences we're excited to get this final story and while they um, keep writing, I want to briefly remind you of how we started the show, which was with Jinu Chong making us an old fashioned. Jinu joined us as our editorial assistant during the pandemic. We have loved working with him, um, but we've never been in the office with him, which is strange because for the past 19 years since we started, one of the most gratifying things about being part of the leadership team of One Story has been working with and training young writers and nonprofit professionals in our office. Um, if you've come to our live events in the past, you've met these folks. They've probably served you a drink like Jinu did at the beginning of the night. They've sold annotated pages and we've given them bouquets as they publish books and when they say goodbye to us. So like we did with our authors tonight, we're going to let a few former One Story staff members tell you directly about their experience with us.
Being part of One Story means being part of a close-knit community. I knew a one-semester internship could give me industry knowledge and skills, but I never imagined I'd also get long-term friends and colleagues, too. Uh, I'm still good friends with one of my fellow interns many years later, and I think of editors, staff, and other readers as mentors and friends. I learned so much about the literary world and continue to learn from One Story even today. I really can't stress enough how many times One Story has vouched for me or wedged open doors for me. I've taught writing at Cornell and for the Telluride Association, and I received an Elizabeth George Foundation grant, and recently signed with a wonderful agent, and all of that has been a direct result of the advice, training, and all of the recommendation letters. So many recommendation letters, thank you, <laughs> that one story offered me. Um, I feel a big swell of gratitude just thinking about it. I'm now the program's assistant at Kundiman, which is a different literary nonprofit dedicated to Asian American literature. Being at One Story really prepared me for this role by not only introducing me to the literary world, but also giving me the opportunity to explore the ins and outs of the nonprofit world. The staff at One Story really allowed me to explore as much as I wanted as an intern, and they were really dedicated to my education and my future as well. I'm really thankful that I could take these skills and apply them to better serve my specific Asian American literary community. One Story supported me by helping me get my first and second jobs in the publishing world, and also by connecting me to my agent for my own writing. But before that, One Story taught me first how to talk about stories. Editorial meetings at One Story showed me how to convey passion and enthusiasm and how to critique a story with an editorial eye. My time at One Story taught me how to edit with rigor and imagination, and so it also made me a far better writer. One Story has helped me with both my career as an editor and my vocation as a writer, and I couldn't be more grateful. And being part of One Story means bringing energy to captivating untold narratives and creating space and opportunities for writers of diverse backgrounds to tell their stories. I call One Story my real world MFA because it showed me how to be a graceful and elegant participant in the big bad world of literary publishing. And when it was my turn to launch a book, I had already seen so many of our authors go through the process. So I knew a little more about what to do and how to handle myself. So now I try to provide the same community for my students and for fellow professors and others in the literary world. When I was at One Story, um, I learned all of the steps that go into getting um, a submitted piece to its final publication. And I also got valuable insight as a writer um, to what the reading process is really like on the literary magazine's side, um, which is great to consider when you're a writer and you're submitting your work. Being at One Story taught me the importance of community, of believing in writers and how one really great short story can change your life and the world. My time at One Story taught me that storytelling is a group effort and that the group is just as important as the story itself. Oh, and dancing. They taught me that dancing is very important. Dancing is very important. Um, at One Story, we dance when we're sad, uh, we dance when we're happy, we dance when we need to blow off steam. And um, it's also one of the ways that we celebrate our community. And keeping One Story afloat over the past year made us realize how important that community is to us and to the people we work with. And we really feel like we wanted to make that circle bigger. So we decided to start something new an apprenticeship program. And this program will not only include all the opportunities our interns have had in the past, but also include things like outside training and copy editing and production design to help our candidates build their resumes towards a job in publishing. A donor found this idea as exciting as we did. And because of their generosity, this position will be funded for a full nine months in academic year. We're offering it to at least one student from a background generally underrepresented in publishing starting in the fall. Expect to hear more soon and to meet our first apprentice in person at next year's ball. And if you want to support the hiring of a second apprentice, please donate tonight or just reach out. You guys know where to find us. 
Yeah, this project is one we've been trying to pull off for a really long time, and we're so excited to be, be, be moving forward with it. And we're also moving forward to the close of our show. So let's bring all of our exquisite corpse writers out for a reading of their final story. The penguin looked real, like really real, which made Madeline uncomfortable. Sitting on the leather couch, a bitter unsweetened iced tea in her hand, next to what might have been a real live dead stuffed emperor penguin, its flippers manipulated to hold a tray that was carrying an ice bucket and a pitcher of more iced tea. She cast about for a sugar bowl or a honey bear or something, anything really to make the horrible stuff just mar marginally less acrid. But the only sweetener that seemed to be available in Tabitha's combination coffee shop and taxidermy was a bowl of ancient looking packets of sweet and low, sickly pink. She took the pink packages, exactly 10 of them, and carefully tore each one and poured the sweetener into her martini shaker, not bothering to wash the remnants of the vodka and vermouth and cough syrup from the night before. And this, the whole disgusting mix she threw back, ignoring the way her tongue lurched up in revolt, ignoring the shudder it sent through her shoulders, past the teeth, over the gums, look out stomach, here comes a world of shit. Mmm, nummy, she said and <laughs> smiled, hoping some of it had clung to the front of her teeth, hoping to give someone a show at least. And in fact, there was an audience she saw now, peering into the shadows, though many of them were only semi-visible and only a few of them seemed human, staring with rapt attention at her overlit face, reaching into striped paper bags of popcorn or no noisily opening plastic packages of peanut butter sandwich crackers. She didn't know how she hadn't noticed all of this before, that in fact she was in a theater of sorts, or perhaps cage was the more apt word. That was a precise recreation of her apartment down to the drywall dust on the floor from the hole she drilled to look into her neighbor's bathroom. Her understanding of all this was so tenuous, her attention so peripatetic. What right did she have to be shocked or appalled by this predicament? She who had spied on the people below her, she who was so fond of strangers into her own personal lab rats. All of which she had just said out loud, <laughs> taken by a sudden urge to exolutrostomize. <laughs> A word her father had taught her when she was 12 and thought the best way to punish her was to make her learn the meanings of impossible words. Her father was a cruel but perspicacious man with a gift for sniffing out the subtlest of weaknesses. When she forgot the meaning of exolutherostomy, he kept her up past 2 a.m. in a manic binge of rote memorization. Who even knows how he might respond just now were she to nab a pack of sugar substitute. But as she'd been trained to do through hours of cognitive behavioral therapy, she set these thoughts aside, discarding them as useless psychoanalytic woo-woo and turned to the matter at hand which was figuring out how she would, at last, kill her darlings. <laughs> she would do it abruptly, she decided, because it would be less draining. It would be, instead, a bullion, agitated, as if about to boil over. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, you <yo. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> um, you say there are no imposters in that group. Some of them are even using like old definitions of words, Manuel. Um. <laughs> yeah, that story did not go where I expected it to, but that is the magic of an exquisite corpse. Um, we will be sharing a copy of that story with everyone who donated tonight. So the big question, how do we do, Mary Beth? Do we have a final tally? Well, I, I, I just refreshed my phone and our final tally is $38,047, which is really incredible. And I am overwhelmed. <laughs> and, you know, what that does is it's a kind of a magic number because it covers the cost of printing all of these for a year. So that is incredible. Thank you, everyone out there. If we didn't say your name, know that we saw the donation and it is incredibly appreciated. 
Um, and before we want to go, we have to thank our small but mighty board of directors, Nicola Raji, Julie Bearer, Danny Shapiro, Rob Rach, and Kevin Raymond. They helped us so much to get to this point. I also want to thank our One Story staff who did so much also to help put tonight together. Lena Valencia, Patrick Ryan, Devin Emke, Jinu Chong, Natalie Whalen, Will Allison, Karen Friedman, Manuel Gonzalez, Maza Mengiste, and all of our volunteer readers and interns. Thank you so much. And we want to thank David Seeger and Today Video who were in our ears all night and they helped us through, put us all together and they had the confetti and the letters. Um, <laughs> And next year will be at, next year will be one story's twentieth anniversary, which is hard to believe. Um, we'll definitely be throwing a big party. We don't have the date yet, but we hope to soon. Get ready to put it in your calendar. We couldn't have done this without all of you. Thank you so much, and we will see you in twenty twenty two in Brooklyn. Everybody, get ready to dance. We'll Good be night. dancing there. Good night. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night. Thank you.